Welcome to this week's Escape Your Limits podcast, which was recorded live from the 2023 Escape Fitness Growth Summit. Some of the largest fitness equipment distributors from around the world who represent some of the industry's leading equipment brands from Precore, Life Fitness and Matrix and many others, including Escape, came together to share the shifting trends of gym design and architecture. Recovery is becoming extremely important. Many people choose their hotels based on the gym offerings. The most successful facilities are uh, where the, uh, the best trainer. Strength is, is a top of the discussion. We're definitely seeing strength training growing, um, I think in both the sectors, but specifically multifamily. If I go into a space, I will see a lot more women with dumbbells and kettlebells than I would men. What kind of trends from a facility perspective are you seeing developing in your region? Uh, recently, I believe so that MMA is taking back place in the clubs and I believe so that boxing uh, is going back to the track. So please welcome Candice Pettit from Advantage Sport and Fitness USA, Edgars Berex from G Fitness Latvia, Gina Kerstal from Aki Fitness in Dubai, Yor Magrabi from Water Tree in Ghana, and finally Mohammed Sharma and Osama Aoun from Delta Fitness in Saudi Arabia. Please enjoy this week's episode of the Escape Your Limits podcast. Yeah, I'm Maud Mogrebi um, from company Water Tree, Ghana, West Africa. And what brands do you represent in Ghana? Uh, we do Escape Fitness, obviously. Um, my major brand uh, outside for other equipment is uh, Matrix. Um, I do another brand, which is a B brand, uh, Body Tone, um, some consumer in Tunturi, and then uh, Ecore Flooring. So what kind of fitness concepts are popular in Ghana? Is it mainly hotels? Are you getting standalone gyms? What, what, what are you seeing there? So traditionally started out with standalone gyms um, and our hotels, especially the four and five star hotels would double up as commercial gyms as well. So they would sell memberships and they were competing in the same space as a normal standalone gym. And therefore the standard of equipment and facility design went up because of that. Oh. What are some of the main brands over, over there? In terms of equipment? Um, for, from the operator side? Um, there actually aren't that many. Uh, everyone has developed like a homemade brand and just branded themselves. There isn't an operator from outside that has come into Ghana and actually said, we're developing a gym. I have heard rumors that Gold's Gym wants to come in. Um, in the past, Virgin Active tried to come in, but it's a very difficult space to play in. Right. In, in the market. Why, why, why is that? Just there's not the demand there yet, would you say? Or The demand is there. The cost of actually being an operator in terms of rental rates, um, in terms of return on investment are very key. So if I'm buying equipment, especially trying to keep up with a standard that's going to be almost a Western standard, you'd have to invest at least half a million dollars into a space in order to get uh, the value and the standard you want but the return on investment is not going to be within the next 15 years. Right. So it doesn't make sense from a business perspective. What percentage, or do you know what, roughly what percentage of the population go to gyms? Well, off the top of my head, no, there's not data we have. But if I were to guess, I would say less than 3%. Right. Yeah. And, and when they go to gyms, what, what, what do people look for? Are they looking for group exercise, weight loss? What, what are some of the popular trends there? Yeah, thanks. Uh, the, the market has been changing. You know, traditionally it was just cardio, uh, aerobic sessions, you know, dance classes. Um, over the years, I've seen things change. I've seen CrossFit come into the market. I heard that bar is in the market. Um, yoga picked up quite, you know, frantically. Uh, everyone is doing yoga or Pilates. Um, so you're kind of seeing that going. And then group training, so, um, we brought in when I was doing an operation on it, um, indoor cycling, body pump and things like that. We're picking up, but I see that phasing out a bit more now as well. So we're going back to more functional training with, you know, kettlebells, plyo boxes, battle ropes. These are the things that are, are kind of like in the market now. What's the level of the fitness instructors that are teaching this in the market? Is there any formal education uh, that, they, that they pick up? Or? So there's no real local class for it. Um, what we're seeing a lot of repatriates coming back into the market space. So some people are really advanced coming from the UK, the US, Canada, um, bringing in the knowledge for that. And then we are seeing a lot of people doing online classes, at least to get certified um, and to improve your knowledge. Uh, we do have a lot of trainers that have come in and have been in the market space, but self-taught. Um, and sometimes they have more knowledge than people who've studied it. So mm. it is quite interesting. When you're designing gyms now, how 
if at all, are you designing them maybe different to a few years ago? Are you seeing any particular parts of the space that either you're pushing more or people are asking you to make, make sort of more available? Yeah, so I've been designing for about 15 years now. Um, and I do it myself with my software. And what I am seeing is that if, um, from a design perspective, things are kind of changing. People are integrating a lot more lights in, features of the wall. Like we're getting a lot more brick effects, you know, a lot more micro cement effect in there, uh, neon lights. Um, it depends from the design aspect. So when you come and suggest it as a design perspective, people are more open to it and the options for it. In terms of the equipment, if you introduce something to our market, we're known as uh, the Dubai of Africa at this stage. So if you introduce something to the market, it takes off quite quickly. And with Instagram and influencers coming in, people say, look, I do want this specific piece of kit. And therefore, you try and find a way to introduce in the market and then it takes off like wildfire. Right. Yeah. I know one of the things you spoke about today that's popular is, is glute training. How, how is that something that people are asking for over there? We tend to see people doing it with, with bars and plates um, and a bench. Um, traditionally, they have done it with certain machines that would offer that. So it is something that's picking up. Obviously, um, I would say 10 years ago, the demographic for people that were training in the market space would have been more men. So we are seeing a balance coming in and actually probably more women than men training now. So definitely when it comes to lower body training and core exercises, we are seeing people going more, especially women, looking for exercise and equipment that, that will help them with that. Are you also seeing like um, some of the... Uh discussions today, more women going into the freeway areas using squat racks and a lot heavier weight than years before as well. Is that Definitely. I mean, you're seeing, you're seeing heavier weights, you're seeing free weights going in, um, a lot of calisthenics even, you know, so using the pile boxes, um, using step decks and, and, and combining workouts with that. If I go into a space, I will see a lot more women with dumbbells and kettlebells than I would men. Mm. You, you would traditionally now see men just going to racks, you know, or you know, fixed stations, but I'm seeing a lot more women being adventurous with uh, free weight and kettlebells and functional training. And with your own business then, what things are you looking over the next few years to potentially add to your offering that, that you're not in, involved in today? I think one of the bigger spaces that we can play in, especially being in Africa, is outdoor fitness. We don't get a lot of outdoor fitness. Um, and if we can actually build kits because of a harsh environment of being by the ocean, it's been difficult to have a good piece of kit that comes in that can work. So I know that there is a capability to do this and I'm, I'm working more with owners to try and get outdoor equipment into that space. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank good you. to see you. Candice Pettit, I'm with Advantage Sport and Fitness and I specialize in multifamily fitness solutions. And what brands do you represent, Candice? Precore is our top. Uh, we also represent Powerlift, Escape, Ecore, those are our main partnerships. Right. What, what are some of the fitness facilities that you're seeing as an organization that are increasingly popular from a, from a facilities or fitness location perspective? Uh, it's, well, for markets for us, education, multifamily, some corporate, country clubs, those are the ones that we spend the most time in. Right. And which one would you say is kind of booming at the moment? We're, I mean, doing a lot in multifamily and a lot in education right now. Right. Those are our two top markets. What are you seeing from equipment design trends? Are you seeing people are asking things that they weren't two or three years ago? Yeah, I, I definitely an increase in um, understanding more of this uh, an overall, well, overall wellness perspective in multifamily specifically. People are um, asking more about what to do in spaces like meditation, recovery, they're even looking at saunas a lot more, cold plunge rooms even are a topic of discussion, which is interesting. Um, so I think just understanding kind of more of a, an overall wellness, um, we're seeing more of that. Um, also increase in just free weight strength is, is a topic of discussion. We're definitely seeing strength training growing, um, I think in both the sectors, but specifically multifamily is what I'm most aware of. What about cardio? What's, what's happening in that space? Uh, cardio, definitely we're seeing an increase in um, still treadmills, but more hit cardio. Um, and also instead of elliptical, it's more step mill and elliptical categories we're seeing, you know, as um, kind of an increased um, popularity. So uh, as far as, you know, the cardio sector, I think people just want more options. So giving them the hit cardio, 
Um, also, more connected products. Peloton is still pretty popular in a multifamily setting. So, introducing the next big thing in functional training: the Escape Barrow, a revolutionary training tool that combines a loaded farmer's carry with a sled push to develop hip, grip, and core strength. Developed in partnership with Pete Holman, inventor of the TRX Rip Trainer and Nautilus Glute Drive, the Escape Barrow can be rolled, pushed, dragged and carried. The Escape Barrow packs a punch with an impressive load capacity of 440 pounds and with a two-stage galvanized paint covering process, it's also ideal for outdoor use. So head over to escapefitness.com forward slash barrow. That's escapefitness.com forward slash barrow to find out more. Enjoy the rest of this episode. And what about on the fixed resistance? Are people still putting that in, taking it out, putting it back in again? It's... Depends on the size, but mostly because we're a little bit more size restricted in multifamily. You're just seeing more of a desire for things like free weight. So things that are more functional. So functional fitness, free weight, um, cable, you know, trainers, just things that you can do more of when you don't have as much space. Right. And what about on the uh, design perspective? Are you seeing, because some, some of these apartments that I've seen you guys do are extremely impressive. And, and how are you seeing the architects, you know, is it from material trends or lighting or anything like that, that that's starting to appear that's relatively new? Well, I really, I see that, I think the biggest thing that I've seen is that the designers and the architects are, are definitely coming to us as fitness consultants more to understand the equipment, the zoning to be able to design to that. Um, every building seems to have their own design flair. They want it to kind of go with the overall concept of what they're trying to achieve. That can vary, very greatly market to market, project to project. Um, so I think the biggest trend that I'm seeing is designers trying to really understand the fitness space more and consulting more with us. We, we're doing tons of different um, you know, calls and team gatherings as a unit where it was very separate before. I never used to talk to the designer. I never used to talk to the architect. Now I, I'll get calls like, hey, can you kind of advise me on the best way to do the mirrors or just the best way that we could have some lights and if they're hanging at a certain point. So we're really just, what's the type of flooring that we could do that would be more functional, but they still want the certain aesthetic. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of helping them through that because um, they may not want to do maybe a gray rubber flooring, but they want to make sure it's still functional in the fitness space. So I think what I... I'm liking right now is that there's just more of communication from you know a fitness perspective on on kind of how to best outfit the space and how to use kind of coordinate that with the design aspect too and integrate the two together yeah, yeah rather than just saying there's a room put that's that's going to be the gym yeah I think there was just a lot of misses and you'd walk I think we still see that today you walk into a space and sometimes it's like it looks pretty but it's just not functional or they gosh, I wish they would have put a, a mirror, even something as basic in a free weight area, um, you know, free weight zone. So I think that what we're seeing is just the more awareness because fitness is so desired with residents that they want it to be a space that people really enjoy coming to. Um, but they also know there's a functional aspect that needs to be met too. Right. Are you seeing any facilities break that down into demographic from an age perspective? So are you seeing people where there's generally a younger community or, you know, college students and that sort of thing, wanting something different to maybe more senior living facilities? Yeah, we absolutely have to ask those questions coming in because we'll treat them very differently. Um, it, I think most of the conversations, less it's, they know it's an active aging community. Um, a lot of developers still telling me that it actually, they thought it would be a younger demographic, but it ended up being more of a mixed use environment. So, so I think sometimes they're caught off guard by kind of who ends up coming into the building and using the building. We may know just based on the area, what would be um, more realistic, um, but we're seeing um, aside from active aging, even it doesn't matter kind of the age, people want more functional, they want more free weight. So we may scale it a bit from younger to older. We may, um, you know, look at that a bit differently, but we're seeing that, that gap kind of narrow um, a bit more in recent years. And my final question, how would you say the appetite for increasing the investment in that health and I suppose it's more wellness space? Are, are developers now 
saying, look, this is really important. And whereas before we kind of have this small room, we'd spend X amount. Now they're increasing that spend because it is, is more important. Yeah, definitely. It's seen as an important amenity space. So we're seeing larger square foot, you know, in, the, um, in America, we're seeing what used to be maybe a thousand square feet under more of 2000 even plus facilities becoming more of a norm. Um, so I think that people really understand because they've done all of the polling, they know what residents want, they know what's important, they know more people are working remotely in their you know home, in their apartment home today as well. So they understand that some amenities are, they need to create more priority focus on. And you know obviously workspaces is one, Fitness is another though, because people want that flexibility and they want to be able to get to their fitness space quickly. Thank you, Candice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, my name is uh, Edgars. Uh, I am from uh, Riga, uh, Latvia. Uh, that's um, a small country, uh, one of the Baltic countries. So, and uh, we've uh, worked in a, a Baltic market and also Finland. Okay, what kind of trends are you seeing from a facility perspective at the moment in Finland and the Baltics? Yeah, I mean, uh, we see that uh, chains uh, are, are bigger and bigger. They are buying uh, smaller clubs uh, and they buy smaller chains. So we have uh, uh, actually now uh, two big uh, chains that have merged a couple of uh, different clubs together. And then there are uh, uh, separately, there are many uh, smaller like PT studios coming up and uh, uh, what else we see uh, corporate gyms actually quite uh, many are popping up because uh, we see that companies care about the environment they care uh, about the employees and they want to add value uh, to their uh, and uh, working environment so uh, especially like big uh, companies like banks and uh, some of the manufacturers they are adding that to their facilities has that been something that's been spurred on since the pandemic? Yes, yes right. exactly. We see we probably they, they um, uh, people overall, they uh, thought over uh, about uh, like many changed their jobs and many uh, people uh, kind of like also started to think about their health. We, that's uh, in the end, it's a good outcome, actually. Right. What are you seeing from a design and aesthetic perspective? Are you seeing any materials, colors, designs that, that are starting to appear in some of the projects that you're working on? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we've been uh, one of the, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it proudly, one of the pioneers actually, of actually that, uh, to encourage uh, gym owners to think about uh, the design as an important part of their uh, offering. And uh, so uh, we see that uh, clubs and even small studios, they think more and more about it and uh, as an integral part. And that's, that's good for the market overall because the customer has uh, a nice offering. And uh, so basically, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, even, even as uh, the small studio, as I mentioned, they, uh, they uh, attract the designer and they basically, uh, they, it's, it's important part. What brands do you represent in those markets and what equipment trends are you starting to see that weren't popular three or four years ago? Yeah, we uh, represent uh, Escape Fitness. We are fortunate that we do. Uh, always been an inspiration for us, uh, the things you do, guys. Uh, then uh, Life Fitness, uh, TRX, uh, and Terragon. So just to note a few. Right. Um, and what are you seeing uh, that either you're putting on the gym floor that's probably new or different? Are there any, any, any are, they, are they being designed and laid out a little bit differently? Yeah. We see free weights uh, are getting bigger, uh, the areas and also uh, clubs want to add like uh, more uh, squat racks, uh, half racks, uh, power racks, things like that. Then uh, glute training uh, is uh, quite popular actually. So uh, clubs uh, have dedicated areas for that. Uh, it was not uh, like that before. What else? Uh, well, cardio area is kind of like shrinking and it's uh, uh, maybe it's, uh, some of the um, classic cardio pieces are swapped out to uh, non-motorized treadmills, for example, uh, so air, um, air bikes, uh, what else, uh, rovers, so things like that. So, 
it's uh, more versatile. Right. And what about on the group exercise, like group cycling or, or mm -hmm. sort of typical aerobics? What are you seeing happening in that space? Uh, we see that, um, uh, well, the, the most successful facilities are uh, where the, uh, the best trainers. So trainers attract uh, uh, and uh, they make this community. And so the success, uh, the successful cycling studios are where the best trainers are. So we see that the education is quite important and that the trainers also, mm, uh, they uh, get uh, the, uh, their uh, skills updated all the time. So uh, these, if these if facility, if facility is treated like this, then uh, yeah, they're successful nice. with this as well. So. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Gina Kirishite, I work for AKI Fitness in Dubai and I look after the commercial club segment. What brands do you represent in Dubai? The best. <laughs> <laughs> that being Escape Fitness, obviously, the reason for being here, Life Fitness, Assault, Concept 2, Rogue. Uh, we represent some flooring brands as well, but these, let's say, are the main brands that we represent. Dubai is always seen as though it's the hip place where a lot of the latest things are happening. Yes. What are you seeing in terms of trends from operators, investors, from a facilities perspective in Dubai? Quite a few things I think have been changing within the last years. Uh, first thing that comes to my mind is recovery zones. Recovery is becoming extremely important. By recovery, I would even, you know, say cryo, red light therapy, obviously all sorts of guns, massage chairs, etc., etc. But these are, not, this is now one of the trends that more and more clubs want to invest in. Mm. This is one. Second, lifting, or lifting, lifting, power lifting. You would go to the clubs and you would see several platforms, sometimes even eight, 10, 12, as before it, it was in common, let's say, unless it was performance centers. And now you see everyone in those platforms, you know, from girls, teenagers, to grown-ups, to bodybuilders. Right. That's another trend. Uh, small group training and ground class training, let's say, on the floor. So around octagons, racks. So basically functional slash CrossFit training is still a hype. What about places where people go to do fitness? What's, are, are you seeing the boutique market still fairly strong? Are people, is the corporate wellness market developing? How are you seeing some of the places that are either continuing to offer it or new places that are offering fitness now? Commercial clubs that can offer several solutions, let's say. So a commercial club that can offer kids classes, commercial club that can offer the Olympic lifting, commercial club that uh, can offer CrossFit, a wide range of strength equipment, because that's another trend. You see that clubs are reducing cardio and increasing strength machines and functional training. I think now past projects that I worked on were normally, let's say, would be 20 treadmills. Now it's eight, as an example. And uh, another thing which is very noticeable is members and how educated they are. So that six or seven percent of gym goers in United Arab Emirates are extremely educated in the sense that the market is young. You have to keep in mind that everyone in Dubai is relatively young because it's until your working age, right? Uh, the ones that go to the gyms as well. And they come educated, they come to the gym, they know what to do. Then they come to the operator and they ask, all right, I need a chest press, different grip. I need a shoulder press, different variation. As in before, people would be just happy, members would be just happy what's in the gyms. Now, very often, they go and demand, listen, I saw this brand, I saw this brand, can we get that, can we get that? So we see that a lot, that now operators kind of in some ways need to catch up. Some of them do, some of them are up there because members are very educated mm. for the people who are going to the gym. Because again, you know, we still have a problem in the Middle East with type two diabetes, obesity, <laughs> etc. and big population part is not going to the gym. So I think our penetration is maybe 6% or something like that, which is extremely low. However, the clubs keep opening. And same, you know, we have, uh, we have an opportunity to go to hotel gyms to train as well. So uh, there are different apps, different facilities offerings, community clubs as well. So in Dubai, there are plenty of options where to work out.
What, what's the standard of the gins in the hotels? I know last time I went pre-pandemic, I, I, I used to go to the Jumeirah and they had a... Even, even years J -Club, ago, when, right? that would, well, yeah, when that was yeah. opened, it was always quite ahead of its time. What, what's the standard of hotel gyms like, could you say? I think it's improving from how it used to be before because even some pictures that you show today in your presentations, it used to be very standard, right? Several treadmills, some cardio, some strength. Again, depends on the brand, but right now Dubai is being seen as a tourist destination, right? Even since COVID, because we were open to everything. And many people choose their hotels based on the gym offerings. So many of the uh, hospitality brands have to upgrade, basically, and change it to make it a completely different offering from how it used to be before. Because now people are choosing hotels based on the gyms they have or outdoor equipment area that they have. What about outdoor fitness? I know it's pretty hot out there to train. Do you, are, you, are, you, are people doing stuff outdoors or is, it, is, it, is the climate just not? They are, they are. There are lots of runners. There are lots of uh, people training for triathlons. Uh, outdoor functional fitness is very popular for around six months, let's say, training outside. Then the other six months, the problem is not only that the equipment gets affected, but as well, working out in 40 plus, obviously physically it's different. And you know, you need all AC systems, etc., which is too difficult. I would say, but outdoor training, especially post COVID, like everywhere else, people want to be outside. Mm -hmm. The only problem is that starting from now till October, we kind of can't be outside. <laughs> That's the difference. There's a lot of residential buildings going up. Are, are, are they starting to put decent standard gyms in as well? The higher end ones, yes. The standard ones, no. We are privileged, obviously, to have a gym in each and every building in Dubai. So when you speak to someone from UK, Everyone's like, oh, you should be happy already. You know, you have a gym. But when you work in the industry, you go to those gyms and you're like, this is not up to standards because they look like old hotel gyms. Actually, in Europe, that's how hotel, mainly hotel gyms look like. I think how our residential buildings look like. So the higher end, the ones where you would spend a lot of money on rent or uh, buying the apartments, they try to invest more. So there are several developers that right now are looking into changing the concepts as well. Because previously it was very standard. People from procurement would be requesting, I don't know, equipment that you don't use anymore for such a long time, like steppers or things like that, you know. But now that's changing. Yeah. That is improving. Now what about design trends? Are you seeing any trends in terms of materials, colors? We talked about some of the eco um, drive recently. Is there any things that you're seeing that's notable in terms of the way that people are driving the, the, the gym aesthetic? Lightning is becoming a very big thing for the past few years. What and kind of light things are you, you, are you seeing? Nightclub feeling, especially for the studio. So I think that's what we picked up from California or New York, started the trends, I would say. That is still continuing. Uh, I would say David Barton probably was an inspiration for many. You know, a bit of funky, crazy stuff like the graffiti, graffiti sculptures, etc. is still a thing. Definitely, what's not a thing anymore is great wall, gray walls and you know something. <laughs> they should never be a thing ever. I know, but but <laughs> even if you've been to Dubai, like yeah. let's say five six years ago, that's what you would find in the gyms. So right now, that's different. There's more 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 focus on on making gyms. Yeah, and, and giving the full giving the full solution. Like it's because yes, we did have some now low cost gyms coming in, but mainly it's medium to premium and competition is high, so you need to offer something different, something better, something more. It's, you know, we constantly strive in Dubai, you know, to be the biggest, the best, the, the newest. So that's what the operators are trying to do. And, you know, thinking that it's local brands, developed brands locally, it's pretty impressive. Excellent. Well, thank yeah. you very much. Thanks thank you very time. much. Yeah. Okay, this is Mohammed Shamma, uh, the head of marketing at Delta Fitness, uh, Saudi Arabia. It's Osama On. I'm the key account sales supervisor. I'm handling all key accounts related to Delta Fitness. And uh... very good. What brands do you represent? Yes, actually, we represent Scape Fitness for sure. We are proud of this partnership with you. And uh, Life Fitness, uh, TRX, InBody, um, uh, Actual Core, Sports Art. Uh, actually, more than 25 world-class brands. Right. What kind of trends from a facility perspective are you seeing developing in your region? 
recently, I believe so that MMA is taking back place in the clubs. And I believe so that boxing uh, is going back to the track most in most clubs. Uh, and uh, functional as well, functional workout, group uh, workout is taking place as well. I've seen some stuff on YouTube and it looks like it's kind of space age concept. What, and I've heard some of these names. What are these projects that are being built in, in the kingdom at the moment? Could you just give a little bit of an explanation? Because uh, okay. they're, not, they're not just typical developments, are they? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Neom. It has uh, um, the main the main project in Neom is the line. Yeah, it's a sustainable city. It's about 1,000 kilometer. There will be no no uh, cars inside, only electric things and uh, recycled energy. So uh, and it's next to the coastal with the desert. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's one of the let's say good project that's going to be held in Neom, as well as the uh, small island that's held in Red Sea. We call it Amala. A lot of uh, hotel groups are growing in there, and a lot of multinational names are coming and investing in there. What are you seeing in terms of design on the gym floor? Equipment that's now popular that wasn't, and, and things that people are not ordering anymore. What, what kind of change are you seeing within your business on that front? Uh, Designing, uh, it's, a, it's a good point uh, for, the, for the client. Uh, once we are consulting, the client, it depends on the client needs and who's targeting and what's his budget. So uh, this has to take, to take into consideration once we are consulting the client, we now want to know, okay, we can provide you the design. Uh, it depends on the, let's say, the, the club uh, space. space requirements, budget, all of these has to take place as well. Uh, nowadays, uh, our market especially, uh, we have like se three segments. We have the high-end segment, the mid-segment, and the C segment. Let's say for the A, for the A segment, uh, the club is a high-end targeting VVIP persons, uh, and it has an ambience of uh, hotel or hospitality. Uh, that's for the VVIP. What's for a VVIP then? Uh, for the how, how do they kind of, did say, like, what's that, like multi-millionaire type of status? Is that kind of... Uh, it depends. Uh, let's say uh, the people who uh, likes... Uh, Interested in maybe premium products, the technology, yeah. the interior designing yeah. of the gym, yeah. the, the added value feature, let's say, for the members to provide them a special journey of of work out and exercise in their gyms, well, they are always focusing on the high-end brands, yes. the top-of-the-line products. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I this uh, uh, this sector is growing more in Saudi Arabia, uh, plus to the other, uh, other categories. Other yes. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Definitely. And we at Delta Fitness, I'm sorry, provide a complete solutions: consultation, designing, uh, leasing, operation. Uh, Exactly, flooring, uh, A to Z solutions for the uh, gym owners. Mm -hmm. So we provide a full solution, full journey uh, to, to give the best experience to the members. You guys must certainly looking at a lot of the stuff that comes out of your country, very, very design led, very futuristic. What, I, and I would, I would certainly say you're ahead of most countries really in, from that respect. What are you seeing as some of the design trends, colors, shapes, materials? What, what, what are some of the, some of the themes that, that you're seeing in a lot of developments going, you know, being developed at the moment? I believe the most uh, designs are, are being requested or are being trendy in our market is the industrial. Industrial? Yeah. Right. Naked ceiling, colorful, blue, red, or lighting yellow, system. lighting system. Uh, these are the most uh, design uh, requested. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Thank You're you. Welcome. Sir. Thank you for hosting us. Right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. We are again proud of our partnership with Escape Fitness, and thank we will take the journey of our members to uh, another level, aligned with you guys. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for making the time Thanks. to come thank over. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you've got any value from it whatsoever, then please do us a favor: like, subscribe tell somebody and that will help us to be able to continue to do more of these and help you escape your own personal limits. Thanks for listening.